Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Angela, and I am the owner and creative energy behind Elfen and Helden. And I'm so happy you're here. Let's get started then. Today, I have a chest of drawers model, Brutal Oak. That's how we say it basically in German. I'm not sure if that exists in English, but uh, I'm also known for making up new words. Olsen got a good claim with white lightning from Dixiebel and uh, a quick scuff scan with a sanding sponge as the surface was pretty shiny. I have a Moroccan style in mind with loads of red, black, turquoise and of course gold. As a base for this I chose Barn Red and Honky Tonk Red from the Dixiebel Chalk Mineral Paint series. First I paint a base with the Barn Red. For this I use, as per usual, my mini brush from Dixiebel. The paint covers excellently. From the middle, I wanted to achieve a slight color gradient from Honky Tonk into the Bond Red. For blending colors, it is important that the paint stays moist. Therefore, I'm using my Mr. Bottle, little paint, and very delicate brush strokes to work the colors into one another. I use a brush for each color, or a separate brush for each color. I barely touch the surface with the brush. It's, um, I call it butterfly kisses. And uh, also the two shades of the reds are very close together and this also makes the blending very, very easy. So if you haven't blended paints or colors before, um, try to do that. Choose color hints which are close to each other and just try that. There are many ways to achieve gradients and today I chose this technique of a base color and then working in the accent color on top of it. Ixibel's chalk mineral paints are VOC free, are odorless, super easy to work with, they dry very quickly and they are self-leveling, meaning during the drying process the brush strokes level themselves out. So if you're looking for a very smooth finish with chalk paints, this is definitely the paint for you to go for. For the feet, I choose caviar, which is a lovely rich black, which we're going to use later also for some accents on that uh, little project. Of course, one must not forget the sides and the edges of the uh, of this dresser or whatever you're painting. So, um, therefore, I'm taking the drawers out now and um, I'm looking after those, those areas. I like to paint my first layer with the drawers inside of the project, unless I'm, you know, painting only one color. 
But uh, if I do color blends and things like that, I like to have the drawers on the first coat inside the, the project so that I have like an overall view picture of what I'm going to do. And then I can decide if I like it or if I would like to change something. The feet do have like a little groove, I noticed, and uh, so I spontaneously integrated one of the beautiful woody band trims to fill it in. And therefore I've used uh, the trim TR37, which just fits perfectly into that little gap. The woody band trims and ornaments, they do behave like wood when they are cold, but become flexible like rubber when you heat them up with a heat gun, a hair dryer, or something like that. And then you can cut them into size, you can bend them into almost any shape, and they're very versatile to use. For application, I'm using the tight bond quick and thick wood glue to attach them. Even the first coat of paint had a great coverage. I'm now applying a second layer, basically using the same technique as with the first layer. Since the overall picture was right for me with the first coat, I'm now painting the drawers outside of the project. The top also has on the sides a little groove, uh, which is screaming for another woody band trim. And here I'm using the trim TR46.
Now it's time to get to the details. But before I start that, I'm sealing the whole piece with the Easy Peasy Spray Wax from Dixieville, which is a liquid water-based spray wax. And um, the benefits of it is that it is drying within 25 to 30 minutes. So you can basically continue working very quickly and you have your paint sealed and it makes it easier for me now to control um, the different layers um, I am adding. And if I'm not satisfied, it is easier for me to correct it and take it eventually off. So first I'm working with the um, stencil Victorian Damas from Bells and Whistles. And I'm using, again, the caviar, which we already had for the feet. For application, I am using the Besting brush, which is great for larger stencils, especially if you are lazy like I am. No, to be honest, it is, it is, it has a large head and it makes your life really easy when you work with, with pig stencils. So, um, in the middle, I first stipple because I have a little more paint on the brush for that. And uh, towards the outside, I like to have almost like a fading effect. So I'm not reloading the brush with paint anymore. I'm using what I have in the brush. So in the middle, I'm stippling. And um, when it goes more to the outside of the stencil, I am moving the brush in a circular motion to get like a fading effect, basically. <clears throat> So for the next step, I am preparing a wash. And to do this, I take the caviar and dilute it with water. I distribute the mixture into the corners and around the edges of the drawers, um, basically in those areas where you would um, find natural aging and you know where residue is like, um, layering itself down. So that's basically where I want to have that. It looks crazy, don't worry, because I'm going to wipe it back with a, with a damp lint-free cloth. If you have cats, pets, whatever, you know what that means, lint-free. It's not easy to find in my household. So, um, but uh, try to do that. Um, wipe it back um, until you basically like what you see. If you wipe back too much of the black, you just add a little more and um, yeah, you basically go till you, till you are satisfied with the look.
For the chippy effect, I now use a plastic spatula, the matte spatula from Dixiebel, and a painting spatula. First, I work the stencil a little more into the project, and therefore I pick up a little of the caviar on the tip of my spatula, and I'm pulling it down in a very flat angle out of the edge towards the stencil. The edges of the uh, dresser, I've um, moistened or sprayed a little bit with my Mr. Bottle, so the paint moves a little easier. I don't want to have it drippy, I just want to have it um, scraped down a little. And um, then I'm repeating basically the same with the turquoise, where I use the Mermaid Tay from Dixiebel. And, of course, we need to have gold, and therefore I've chosen the Gold Digger from the Moonshine Metallics. Um, basically using the same technique, always from the fringes and edges, anywhere where natural wear and tear would, would occur in, in nature. So I'm also doing that over the stencil part, even um, it is ever so slightly wafer thin raised only, where I applied that uh, paint. But um, when you hold your spatula in a very flat angle and you just glide over this edge of that stencil, stenciled area, um, you leave ever so slightly some of the turquoise on there. On the top, I applied the No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso. It's um, a yeah, dark rich brown. It's an oil-based gel stain that I let dry for about five days, and then I sealed it with a water-based sealing wash. So um, you can seal an oil-based um, stain 
as I said, it's just got to be completely dry. So you have to make sure that you let it dry for at least five days, always depending on room temperature and humidity uh, around. I've chosen the Dixieville Gator Hide, which is the toughest top coat from Dixieville. And I like to use it, especially for um, surfaces which are going to be more used than you know than you would normally do. So finally, I use Dixieville's Gilding Wax in Gold. Final accents around the, the top. And I'm applying it on that uh, rim and on that trim around the, the top of that uh, project. So I can see that you're still watching, which makes me very, very happy. And I thank you so much for that. And I would be even more happier if you go and subscribe to my channel and activate the bell so that you don't miss any of my tutorials and projects in the future. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment or just send me a message. Well, it's time to say goodbye, guys. Thank you so much again for watching. And I'm saying bye-bye for now. Tada! You're Angela from Elfenhelden, also known as the Master of Disaster. See you next time.